Last year, artist received death threats after she privately published some erotic illustrations of adult, or aged up, versions of two of the teenage characters from her comic. Two months later, another artist named was accused of creating, quote, child pornography for drawing a picture of, um, a fully clothed teenage character being carried by a frog. Pylons like this have happened before, and they're almost always directed at queer women who use their art to explore taboo fantasies. As trans writer Anna Valens wrote in an article for the Daily Dot, quote, these critics only approve of art that depicts taboo as fundamentally bad. As if, for example, your average reader needs a reminder that a professor-student lesbian erotica story should not be reenacted with your real students. Friends, let's talk about our fantasies. 1. Bad Fantasies In this video, I want to explore the question of whether some fantasies are bad. And to do that with any degree of sincerity or intellectual honesty, I'm going to need to engage with the fact that if there is such a thing as a bad fantasy, well, mine are definitely gonna qualify. Come hit me with your touch. For example, let's talk about Charlie Dalton. I will always talk about Charlie Dalton. <laughs> Those of you who have seen my other videos know that I have a special affection for this scene from Dead Poets Society, where an actor playing a school principal pretends to paddle an actor playing a student named Charlie Dalton. I have fantasized about this scene a lot. But wait, this is a school scene. I'm in dangerous territory. So I rush over to IMDb and furiously cross-reference the year Dead Poets Society was filmed against the year the actor who played Charlie Dalton was born. Oh, <sighs> sweet relief. In 1989, when Dead Poets Society came out, the actor who plays Charlie Dalton was 18 years old. I'm safe. Or am I? How old is the character? So I rush back to the internet and nothing at first. The character's age isn't mentioned in the script. So I keep searching, desperate for some kind of validation that I'm okay, that my fantasies aren't bad. And then I find it. I'm a monster! <laughs> yep. That's a pretty good reenactment of my own adolescent experience of sexual awakening. I'm a monster. I worried that my fantasies were bad, and I know that a lot of you worry about that too. I've noticed that this anxiety is more pronounced among people with non-normative sexual identities. I think it's because we're used to doing a lot of sexual introspection anyway, and that naturally extends to our fantasy lives. Come hit me with your touch. Sex-oriented straight people just don't worry about their fantasies as much, because their fantasies fit into what is considered normal. And honestly, their normal could really use some introspection too. Girl, you'll be a woman. So really, most people have reason to worry that our sexual fantasies are bad. Which is why I'm making the spectacularly ill-advised choice to film this video. I want to give other people the reassurance that I wish someone had given me. Because I'm not a monster. Or, you know, I am, but the problem is my personality, not my sexuality. <laughs> when I put myself and my experience of sexual attraction under a microscope, the truth is that I'm not attracted to either actor in that scene from Dead Poets Society. I'm not even attracted to the characters. What I'm attracted to is the act of spanking itself. And I know a lot of you who watch my videos are attracted to that too. We just have the misfortune of living in a culture where most normalized references to spanking are almost always in abusive contexts, and that abuse is often inflicted on a child or teenager. I'm attracted to the act itself. Spanking triggers something in my reptile brain, and that's that. Like, look, I also have an erotic response to this. And trust me, I am not attracted to penguins. And neither are you. 
were just attracted to spanking, especially disciplinary spankings that include a high degree of power exchange. It's not our fault that we live in an abusive culture where this kind of thing is most often inflicted on people who can't consent. There are no bad fantasies. We're all worrying about the wrong thing because there sure as hell is bad culture and bad behavior. And that's what we should be talking about. Two, bad culture. This is really not a smart video for me to make. We live in a purity and punishment culture right now, not in the good way. And if the internet is a place where an artist can be accused of pedophilia, actual pedophilia, for drawing a picture of a frog holding a fully clothed cartoon teenager, you can imagine some of the shit that comes my way. Trolls have called me pedophilic before, an accusation that is, to be clear, false, defamatory, and also super boring because trolls have been accusing people with minority sexual identities of that forever. But in my case, the experience is always extra bizarre. Let me show you why. It always happens, as all bad things do, on Twitter. Some polo shirt, usually Christian, usually male, will tweet something like, there's something about the BDSM community infantilizing women with spanking that has a somewhat pedophilic ring to it. Aw, oh, bless. They think we don't infantilize the men, too. <laughs> Tweets like this bother me, of course, but I do take some pleasure in the opportunity to mic drop, because this is how the polo shirts paint themselves into a corner. They don't realize how easy it is for me to checkmate this. I just say something like, if you think it's somewhat pedophilic for consenting adults to spank other consenting adults, you must agree with me that it's really, really bad when adults do it to actual kids. And how do they reply? They never have a good response. They don't want to criticize parenting culture, but I also just used their own words against them. So they tag out with something super flaccid like, I haven't done enough research about that. Sure thing, Carl. You go do some research. Come back to me when you've unlocked the riddle. And that's the bizarre and infuriating thing about being accused of bad fantasies for having fantasies about spanking. We don't live in a world where there is a real threat of cartoon frogs abducting real teenagers, but we do live in a world where spanking is actually a thing that happens to real life kids. And the people who are most eager to condemn me for my fantasies, which they say are bad, are the same people who are too chicken shit to condemn parents and school systems who actually enact my bad fantasies in real life with real kids. There is nothing wrong with my fantasies or yours. The problem is that they exist in a culture that does not keep spankings where they belong, between consenting adults. There are a lot of people who are more concerned about what goes on inside our fantasy lives than they are about what goes on inside millions of American homes every day. That's bad culture. That's what we should be trying to change. Three, bad behavior. Sex positive people who tiptoe a little closer to the edges of the Overton window like to say that there is a difference between fantasy and behavior. Fantasy and sexual behavior are different things. You always have choices about your sexual behavior. And this argument is absolutely correct. There is a difference. We have control over our behavior, but we don't have control over our fantasies. If we did have control over our fantasies, conversion therapy would work. And we all know that conversion therapy doesn't work. But I don't want to leave it there, because while it is true that fantasy is not the same as behavior, it is also true that fantasy can influence behavior. So, do so-called bad fantasies cause bad behavior? A few years ago, the UK outlawed production of porn that depicts so-called bad fantasies, including BDSM, spanking, and rape. So I wrote an article about that. The crux of the argument against this genre of fantasy is that it promotes bad behavior in real life. But research on the topic does not bear out this premise. In a study of four countries, Danish criminologist Beryl Kaczynski found that the availability of pornography, including, quote, aggressive varieties of pornography, 
did not correlate with increased rates of sexual violence. Another study that tracked the massive growth of the porn industry between 1975 and 1995 found that the United States experienced a significant decrease in the number of sexual assaults during that time. Today, rapes and other sex crimes are at their lowest level since the mid-1970s, despite the fact that the internet has made violent pornography more easily accessible than ever before. In fact, rates of rape dropped by a massive 58% during the internet's boom period between 1995 and 2010. So unless more convincing studies come along to change my mind, I am at this point personally persuaded that so-called bad fantasies do not cause bad behavior on a wide-scale societal level. But on a micro, individual level, that's another story. This channel is about the spanking fetish community, and when it comes to bad behavior, yeah, I've got a few things to say. One of my most upsetting moments from the spanking scene was a few years ago, when I went to a vendor fair at one of the big national parties in the United States. There was a guy there selling paddles. So far, so good. But when I went up to take a look, this guy tried to sell them to me by saying they were the same kind of paddle he had used on students in his previous job as a high school principal. This is not okay. Some of you are probably thinking, but wait, you just said fantasies are okay. That vendor was probably just spinning a fantasy. He probably never was a high school principal at all. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was. The problem is, I don't know for sure. The problem is, we do live in a child abuse culture. We live in a culture where some kids really are battered at school. There is no such thing as a bad fantasy, but those of us who do have abusive fantasies within the context of an abusive culture have an absolute responsibility to make the line between fantasy, which is fine, and abuse, which is not fine, absolutely clear. Educational roleplay in a consensual adult context? Awesome. But publicly pretending you abused real kids in the service of an educational fantasy? Not fine. If we want to build an ethical, responsible spanking fetish community, the small minority of you who do that kind of shit need to cut it out. Here's another example. A few months ago, I made a video condemning Facebook groups that pretend to be parents in favor of spanking children, but are really just repressed spanking fetishists getting their jollies on the bodies of real life kids. Some people in the comments section were like, oh, calm down, these probably aren't real parents, there probably are no real kids. And maybe that's true. I definitely hope that's true. But the mere presence of the word probably makes that shit unacceptable to me. A fantasy only becomes bad when a public expression of it contributes to the normalization of real life abuse. Here's the bottom line, friends. Inside your head, have whatever wild, extreme, abusive, non-consensual fantasies you want. Lord knows I do. But if you want to bring those fantasies into the public scene or onto a public platform, it has to be unmistakably clear to everyone who might possibly become exposed to those fantasies that that's just what they are fantasies, with no real-life abuse involved. We don't have an obligation to fix our fantasies, but we do have an obligation to fix our culture. And refusing to be complicit in the normalization of abuse is part of that.